Good morning, folks. We've got a quick look at the sun and then a number of articles to break down. We did get that special video out last night and we'll be doing follow-ups before the new year. But right now, let's go to spaceweathernews.com and we find the last 24 hours on our star were quiet. The sunspots continue to charge back onto the surface, but they are taking in their new environment rather than making their environment a product of themselves. Solar wind, top left, purple line descends as solar wind re-enters normal ambient quiet range. Bottom right, the green bars of the KP index show the diminished geomagnetic unrest from minor to virtually nothing. The next space weather will be the intensified solar wind from the central coronal hole. Only the solid dark core of it unleashes enhanced solar wind, but you can see the underlying structure of the entire magnetic sector here in 211 angstroms. It's ionized iron. Quick nod to the earthquake risk at Cascadia. Looking at the deep quakes like we do for the remainder of the Ring of Fire at QuakeWatch.net, but in Cascadia, they say it's a much slower slip event. That article is in your link list below. And also this, a quick problem for paleoclimatology. Looks like their favorite long-term carbon reducer is not going to work. Weathering by rocks. They now need a new way to make the planet cold every time it tries to get too warm, as observers chuckle. Well, folks, for the rest of today's stories, we need to remember yesterday's top story, probably the solar climate forcing paper of the year. Not only indicating an electrical forcing pathway to the lower atmosphere not before described in climate models, but to identify it, they use the predictably recurring solar wind current sheet, the sector crossing, the solar wind magnetic reversal. Now, we go to the worst solar climate forcing paper of the year, and veteran observers try to nail down the issue before I say it. They were attempting to figure out how much the sun works the climate, and figured out that the irradiance value change since the Maunder minimum could be lower than they thought. Therefore, with a smaller change on the sun, we have to actually further restrict its possible influence over the climate. Now folks, long before this article we shared yesterday, the particle forcing and magnetic field forcing had been well broken out. Heck, it's what our 300 page, 500 citation textbook is on. There is no excuse for ignoring solar particle forcing, especially because it is now supposed to be included in the climate models. The IPCC says so, and so does NASA. By the way, since the particle forcing dataset release in 2017, zero papers have used it and found major human influence on climate. 100% that have used it have found increased solar climate forcing from the sun. So let's come to today's top article. Full paper is free to read and it's on the shift to a more inclusive view of solar climate forcing. The direct solar forcing they are seeing is a radiance, but the indirect would be all those things they hadn't before considered. But into the future, they do now have a great hold on many of the particle forcing pathways, including those that bypass the stratosphere and go directly to the troposphere, where we live. Cosmic ray forcing is getting into the mix as well, and in its proper place as the cloud producer and bringer of cold. And of course, the main reason they don't show this far back in climate propaganda in time is because the sun clearly controls the temperature on a few decades maximum lag. Folks, our textbook is still PDF only right now. Hardcover comes back January 1. And remember, we only do one printing run for every book and there are only 400 left for non-educational use. Professors reserve the rest for the spring. That is at otf.cells.com where the only other thing you can do right now is pre-order the next book coming in February. This is what we began introducing last night in part one of our end of the year review. We went over the cold spikes, the Heinrich events, the magnetic excursions, the major volcanoes and megafaunal extinctions. This was the collection of earth evidence, recognition of a pattern and congruence of that pattern across the different types of events, all leading to the sun. Part two, coming tomorrow, We'll arrive at the sun from the other side, the galactic astrophysics, with a cherry on top from yesterday's top story. We greatly appreciate your support. Watch last night's video, The Next Disaster. Subscribe for part two in these morning news because we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.